Changing your actor's eyes can be a really fun and effective visual effects technique. Whether you're creating a zombie short film or a Witcher-inspired scene, or you're just wanting to add in a fantasy element to one of your actors. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some of the techniques that I used to create the shots that you just saw. In case you missed it, last week we started our Halloween competition, where we challenged you guys to create a short film between 30 and 60 seconds with the theme of Your Worst Nightmare. We've got some really great prizes to give away, and we're going to be hosting live streams throughout the month to help you guys along the way and answer any questions that you might have. You can find more info for the contest in the card on screen. So when creating eye visual effects, there's basically one thing that you have to do regardless of the effect that you're going for, and that is track your actor's eyes. For this step, I'm going to be using Mocha HitFilm, which is included in HitFilm Pro and is available as an add-on for Express, but I highly recommend this method because otherwise you're going to be doing it manually, which can take up time and can be a pain. We have a tutorial on using Mocha HitFilm, so if you haven't seen that, be sure to check it out to get the basics. The basic steps are to apply Mocha HitFilm to your footage, open it up, and use the X-Blind Layer tool to draw a shape around your actor's eyes. You can then track forwards and backwards, and then export that tracking data as a HitFilm composite shot. In HitFilm, if you checkmark Apply Matte, you can also create a cutout for all the shapes that you had inside of Mocha. This is useful for creating a matte of the eye shape itself. Now that we have the tracking data and the matte for the eyes itself, we can begin adding whatever kind of effects we like. So first is this Witcher-inspired black eye design. This is actually really simple. All you have to do is bring in the eye matte that you tracked earlier and fill it with black. One thing that is important is that we shot in logs, so it's a very flat image. When you're choosing the black color, you're going to want to sample it from a shadow inside of your actual footage instead of pure black. This way, when you color grade it, it matches the rest of the footage and is darkened appropriately. Next, duplicate the footage itself and bring it up top. I'll use a set matte effect and change it to the eye matte from earlier. This restricts the footage to only those areas. I'll then use a luminance key to remove the dark areas of the footage, and I'm left with just the highlights, which are the reflections. I can then set this layer's blend to add to put it back on top of the footage. And these reflections make all the difference in your composite. It's much more realistic since the eye, even though it's black, is still reflecting the environment around it. Next up is how to create the zombie eyes. For this, I'm going to use Fractal Noise, which is super useful for all kinds of effects. I'll create a new plane and add the effect to it, and then draw a circle mask using the Ellipse Mask tool. I'll parent the layer itself to the respective eye track so that it moves along with it. For the Fractal Noise settings, these are kind of up to you depending on the look you're going for, but for this I kept it as the default clouds type and lowered the scale so that there's more detail. In the appearance section, you can adjust the exposure and offset to adjust the contrast. If you want to add a white pupil or just a white smoky area, you can use the radial gradient effect on top of the fractal noise. I'll set the colors to white and change the blend to add. If the texture is extending outside of your actor's eye, this is where you would apply a set matte effect and set it to the eye roto from earlier. Once you're happy with how this is looking, duplicate the process for the other eye and remember to change any sort of parents so that it goes from the right to the left eye or vice versa. Then I'll use the technique from earlier to add eye reflections on top, and it's important to keep the environments and lighting in mind when you're compositing. In this shot, Tom's left eye is in shadow, so it's important to consider that when you're adjusting the brightness of whatever detail is going into it. The shadow of the hood also passes in front of the right eye, so I had to keyframe any detail to be darker in those couple of frames. This next effect was inspired by Grindelwald from the Fantastic Beasts movie series. It's very simple, all you're going to do is create a grade layer and parent that to the motion track for the eye. Like before, I'm going to create an ellipse mask around the iris and feather it. Then I'm going to use an effect to brighten the footage. You can use curves, brightness and contrast, exposure pro, pretty much whatever you like. I'll then do the opposite on the other eye to darken it down to brown. I'll also use a hue colorize effect to add a brown tint. For the shot where Tom has golden eyes and different pupils, I did basically the same thing as before combined, so I used fractal noise to add in some texture, I used a mask grade layer to brighten the footage and make his irises a bit more golden, and then I used a bulge effect parented to each track. This is to help hide his original pupil. I can then add a radial gradient effect set to black on top of this. If I change the elliptical deformation, it'll turn into a very long pupil. Now that you know how to create different eye visual effects using various techniques, be sure to check out our Halloween competition. You can find the links for that in the description, and also remember to check out our weekly live streams, where we answer your questions and go over our best techniques for creating this kind of content. Be sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this, and if you have any questions, leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.